Today, few realize the important history behind this gym in downtown McPherson, Kansas, and its tie to the 1936 Olympic Games. But Rich Hughes knows it well. The U.S. Olympic team was composed of a town team from McPherson, Kansas. We're here, here at the court where they played. The old gym still holds much of the charm of decades ago. This balcony once held hundreds of spectators who came here to watch their hometown team. Yeah, this is this is how it been in uh, 1934, 1935, 1936. In the 1920s and 30s, businesses might sponsor a team to publicize their products and services. In McPherson, it was the Globe Refiners, coached by Gene Johnson, considered by many to be the father of modern basketball. He developed the zone press, fast break, and dunking the basketball. McPherson's players worked at the refinery for $4 per day. While they loved the game, they were also glad to simply have a job during the Depression. They took some road trips during the year. They uh, jumped into two Model Ts and, and uh, traveled to Louisiana in the dead of winter. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. So maybe that was bonus enough not to, not to have to go to the refinery for uh, 10 days. 1936 was the first year for basketball in the Olympics. An eight-team single elimination tournament was held in Madison Square Garden to select the players. The New York sports writers had never seen a team throw down the ball like the team from McPherson. The McPherson players came down, you know, threw the ball down through the hoop, what we know now as a dunk. And that Arthur Daly, who he had a Hall of Fame career as, as a sports writer, he was just starting out with the New York Times, and he wrote, that they would shoot the ball much like a patron would dunk their donut into their coffee. <laughs> and so uh, and that's where it came from. That's dunk. where it came from. All but one player on the 1936 Olympic team was from the two finalists in New York, the McPherson Refiners and the Universal Studios team. This is pictured on the SS Manhattan on the way over. While the players had earned the right to compete, they had to get themselves to the ship that would take them to Europe. Times were difficult for most Americans in 1936. The McPherson team was told there would not be jobs waiting for them if they went to the Olympics. And Vernon Vaughn, who had a, a new addition to his family and wanted to stay in the refinery business, he was the sixth man for McPherson and he gave up his chance at the Olympics and ultimately a gold medal by staying back in McPherson. Meanwhile, Universal Studios did not want to support the Nazis by sending players to the Olympics. Their players also lost their jobs for sailing to Berlin, but they later found work at Fox Studios. When the team arrived in Germany, they learned that only seven players could suit up to play in any one game. So the McPherson players and those from Universal Studios remained as a unit and simply alternated playing each game. The basketball organizers in Germany also had different ideas on how the game should be played. If a player was substituted, they could not return. The games were played outdoors on a clay tennis court wind affected shots, and even worse was the weather for the final game. In the first gold medal game, Canada versus the U.S., it was played in a driving rainstorm. So that, that presented plenty of problems, and the final score was only U.S. 19, Canada 8. But it could be explained because they were playing in a, in a mud pit. The U.S. won the first Olympic basketball gold, but Germany quickly urged rule changes to the game. They also wanted to have a rule change. It was, it was a 1.9 meter rule, or for us in the U.S., a, a, the six foot two rule, where everybody over six foot two would be prohibited from playing in the Olympics. While this gym may be a far cry from today's NBA arenas, it was the home gym for America's first Olympic basketball team, a team that went to Germany and brought home the gold. Traveling the countryside in McPherson, Kansas, I'm Andrew McCray. I'm Andrew McCrae. Join me on American Countryside as we go to the home of America's first Olympic basketball team. 